So moving on, questions that the medics have and the medic students, you know, they get kind of confused between SVT, supraventricular tachycardia versus tachycardia. They're both fast rates, okay? A little trick of the trade, that, that, that how I teach it, is if the patient's heart rate is 150, plus or minus 20, so we have 130 up to 170, do this little pearl, all right? It should be narrow complex, because if you have a very wide complex QRS that's tacking out at 150, we have some significant problems, like VTAC. But this would be a narrow complex, so the QRS is narrow, it's below or it's more narrow than uh, 0.120 or three small boxes, which we'll have a little rendition over here. Have the patient take a deep breath, and this is what I do. I have them on the monitor, I'll look at the patient really fast, do a little history, and have them take a deep breath in. If, they're, if they take a deep breath and the rate drops, so it's 150, they take their breath in, it goes 130, 128, 117, and as they exhale, it comes right back up. My friends, that's sinus tachycardia. So start ruling out the simple causes of sinus tachycardia. Caffeine, um, crack, meth, spice, maybe some simple dehydration, stress, uh, any type of stimulant, right? With sinus tach, super easy to treat, find the underlying cause, give them some oxygen, give them some fluids. SVT, supraventricular tachycardia, right? Does not have the variability that the sinus tach does. So it is constant is what that means. So our normal, our normal rates for adult is about over 160, children over 180, infants over 220. When these people are crying, when they're stressed and having them talk, that rate doesn't change. So I do the same thing. It's a narrow complex, it's going really fast. So I ha have the patient, hey, take a deep breath. It's just cooking along, 160, 160, 161, 160, 160. My friends, that's SVT. That's uh, most likely that it's supraventricular tachycardia. So the question is, what do we do with these things, okay? Our, our normal adults, our younger adults, we just do least invasive to most invasive. Actually, with everybody, you should probably try to do that. We start with all the simple vagal maneuvers, all right? Uh, we like to do what's called, the, uh, we follow the revert study, which we put a syringe in their mouth, lay them down, or we actually sit them up, have them blow out for uh, 10 to 15 seconds on the syringe, then lay them down, raise, raise their legs up. Uh, up to about 40% of the time, bam, knocks out the SVT that fast. No drugs. Um, and, and, and no pain from shocking them. Children, we kind of we try to have them bear down. Uh, infants, we can put the ice pack to their face, a mammalian dive reflex, and, and, and just hold it. Don't smother them. And just, just do a little light pressure with the ice pack and see if it vag vagals them down, much like jumping in the cold shower, how you tighten up. So when we have the patient vagal down and we push against that vagus nerve, which directly innervates uh, the heart, among other organs, what that, what that does is that stimulates that parasympathetic nervous system. Instantly dropping the rate in most cases, uh, maybe up to 30 to 40 beats or enough to break that cycle. What you should see then is they go into whatever underlying rhythm they have. Don't always expect it to go into normal sinus. We get this a lot. Hey, the patient didn't go into normal sinus rhythm. They went into AFib. That was their underlying rhythm. That, that's correct. So that is how the vagus nerve works. You stimulate it, it really drives that parasympathetic uh, nervous system to, to activate. So your patient's in SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. You know, when do we give adenosine? Or when do we just go uh, you know, right to a um, synchronized cardioversion? Or what people say, ride the lightning, right? Well, here's a real simple breakdown for it. Look at your patient first. Talk to your patient. We treat the patient, not the monitor. They can, they can have a heart rate of 180, but they have a good blood pressure and they're talking to you and they're not altered and they're saying, yeah, my chest hurts, but it's not 10 out of 10 pain. Um, maybe they're a little pale. Maybe they're starting to get a little diaphoretic or sweaty. I would probably, after I tried to vagal, I would go with my adenosine. I'd go with my pharmacological therapy. Least invasive, uh, but it still can cause a little chest pain, but it usually works, all right? But you get on scene and your patient can't even talk to you. You're almost doing a sternal rub to wake them up. You put them on the monitor, maybe do a snap, a, a quick 12 lead, or they say, hey, I've, I've got crushing chest pain. It's 10 out of 10. You take their blood pressure and they're hypotensive. Their MAP is less than 65. Let's say they're 80 over 47. Um, they're starting to do head bobbing. They're not following your commands. That's easy, guys. Put the pads on. If you, if you have uh, pharmacological agents to help them, to sedate them, either your Tomidate, Ketamine, or Versed, and they have the blood pressure for it, give them a little bit of sedation first, um, give them a little bit of fluid, and then, then light them up. We synchronize cardiovert. SVT, just remember, SVT responds to these smaller joules. So start at 50 joules, push a sync button, get the little diamonds over your QRS, hold the shock, 
snap them out of it. That usually responds, uh, they usually respond very well. All right, so SVT, supraventricular tachycardia, supra above the ventricles. Usually it's gonna be originating in the right atrium, and it's usually a couple pathways. It's a, most of the time it's a re-entry phenomenon. So basically it should be a narrow complex. So it's coming from the SA to the AV node and it's coming down, it's coming down at a very fast rate. It's hitting the AV node, which is usually good at absorbing all these and then blocking them off. And this thing is basically like a backstop guys. It's absorbing all these beats. Let's say it's firing out at 180 and the AV node says, hey, I like this, but I don't wanna conduct all these down to the ventricles or you could be having a, a firing here and it has a re-entry phenomenon. It's coming back around and looping back around. And this is our re-entry phenomenon SVT, all right? Now, these beats are conducting through. The, H, the AV node can't keep up. What's gonna happen? Now, that 180 beats is gonna conduct down to the, uh, the ventricles and now the ventricles are gonna be beating at 180. Granted, in, in this, most of the time, this is a narrow complex. Narrow meaning it's a very narrow QRS. It's happening so fast, you probably won't even be able to see the P waves. And a lot of times we have to look for retroactive or retrograde P waves that they're buried right before the T wave because it's going so fast. That is our most common type of SVT is a narrow complex. You can get a wide complex uh, SVT what we call an SVT with a barency, and it almost looks like a VTAC. This can confuse many medics out here in the field, but we still do the primary treatment. The primary treatment, initially, if you don't know, is adenosine, all right? The whole goal is to slow this down, all right? Well, and we talk about adenosine, it's the most potent AV nodal blocking drug we have on our ambulance. It literally, goes into the AV node and it says enough, and it blocks the impulse from conducting. That's good. People think of adenosine as rebooting uh, the heart. So some common side effects, pain, a little bit of asystole, transient asystole. Trust me, uh, I've never had a patient code from giving them adenosine. So ventricular tachycardia is literally a tachycardia originating in the ventricles. It's a wide, regular, complex tachycardia. There's many forms of it. It can be a torsades type tachycardia, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, or it can just be a, a tachycardia. Both these could have a pulse or they cannot have a pulse. When in doubt, everybody, if you're unsure, treat it as VTAC. Ventricular tachycardia is, is a lethal rhythm um, and it, it precedes uh, ventricular fibrillation, which is an absolute lethal rhythm. All right, so then after SVT, sinus tachycardia. So sinus tachycardia is really any rate that is over 99 beats per minute. It is a narrow complex, meaning it originates in the atria. It's a normal sinus process, so it should have a P wave. It should have a narrow QRS that's under three boxes or 0.12. Um, and it's very benign in itself. Uh, we see sinus tachycardia by doing jumping jacks, running in place, um, drinking a lot of Red Bulls or Monsters. So that can cause a sinus tachycardia. Normally we don't treat this. Uh, very rarely is it symptomatic. Only when the sinus tachycardia gets around 150, may the patient start feeling a little, uh, a little lightheaded or a little fluttering in their chest. All right, and so to summarize this whole board we just drew up here and made a mess of, we have tachycardia, which is a, originates in the, in the atria. It's a rate of 99 or anything over, over 100, basically 100 on up. Um, it's very benign. It starts from the SA node um, and just goes down and it's just a fast rate, okay? It's a narrow complex, like we said before. Um, so what is the difference? They're both tachycardia, but we call SVT supraventricular tachycardia. So it's a tachycardia that's above the ventricles. It originates in the same place that we have our tachycardia, except the SA node, the AV node, we have a re-entry phenomenon, something isn't, isn't working right, something's failing. And the, those electrical impulses are firing back and conducting to the, to, the, to the AV node, which then sends them through to the ventricles. The nice thing about tachycardia is that the AV node can handle a lot of these beats, and the AV node, believe it or not, absorbs most of these beats. It's when you see them get through that rate of 180, uh, 150, 130, they're conducting down to the ventricles now. Okay, so we're gonna do our take-home points and our wrap-up. 
Moving back along here for SVT versus uh, uh, tachycardia. Remember that tachycardia has variability. The rate should change uh, upon the patient taking a deep breath, where SVT does not. It does not have variability. The rate's constant, 160, 160, 160. Stable versus unstable, or symptomatic versus non-symptomatic. You can have an SVT that's stable. You can have a sinus tach that's stable. You can have an SVT that's symptomatic, and we look at these things for our symptomatic patient. Chest pain, hypotension, if they're altered, poor skin signs, they're pale, they're cool, they're diaphoretic, one or all three, or they have shortness of breath leading up to pulmonary edema. That makes a determination uh, between the rate and the patient whether we're going to give them medications or whether we're, we're going to uh, cardiovert this patient.